Hello, crafty friends. Welcome to my channel, Stamp and Create with Beth. I am Beth Roy, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and today I want to do a coloring video for you. I'm going to be coloring this large sunflower from the Celebrate Sunflower stamp set. I've already stamped it onto a three and a half inch by three and a half inch square, and it's stamped in basic gray classic ink. I'm using watercolor pencils, and our finished images will look like this. Mine turn out different every time. And I will have a link to the finished card video in the description. So I'm using crushed curry, pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, and early espresso to color in my sunflower. I'm going to start off with the crushed curry and I'm just adding a quick light layer on all the petals. So I'm not applying very much pressure at all. I'm just adding a very, very light layer. So when you're coloring with pencils, you really wanna build the color. The more pressure you apply, the more it breaks down and pushes down those fibers on the top of your paper. And then it's not going to accept or take any more color. So you wanna start off really light, especially if you're layering colors. So I'm just going quickly around. I'm not worried about if I get all of the space, if there's white space. I just want my initial layer to be crushed curry. And I do turn my flower as I color. I'm kind of going in the direction that the petals are drawn and I'll do this more and more as we add more layers. I do like to keep my pencils pretty sharp. I know everyone that I've watched color definitely has their own preferences, but I do like my pencils to be sharp. And you'll see when I start doing the shadows why that is. So once I've added a really thin layer, see how light that color is? I'm going to come in with my pumpkin pie and I just want to add in where I want my petal to be darker. So if you do not like the orange tone on my sunflowers, that is fine. You could use the different colors of yellows that are available in the watercolor pencils. So I'm just using the lines that the stamp artist has given me. And I'm adding in on each petal a little bit of pumpkin pie where I want it to be just a tad darker. And this color is going to blend in with that crushed curry when we start adding more pressure and building our color. I'm not too worried about being perfect. I like to slowly add layers of color and continue to adjust them as I'm coloring and build up that color. So every time I color one of these flowers, it does turn out differently. That's the beauty of art and handmade. No two are really alike. Now I'm trying to stay away from the tip of my flower because I want it to be really yellow. And I don't want a lot of color overlapping there. So I'm mostly staying toward the bottom of each petal. I 
and to apply color, I'm just kind of going back and forth and in a circular motion, kind of scribbling, not, not being really perfect. So there I've gone around with the pumpkin pie. Now I'm gonna start coming in and adding a light layer of where I want my shadows. And I'm using Cajun Craze for that. So I like to go exactly where the petals are gonna overlap and add in just a line of dark color there. This is why I like my pencils to be a little bit sharper because I really like to get into those little nooks and crannies. And by keeping my flower tips more on the yellow side, it helps create a little separation between all the petals. So I'm just adding in lines. Again, light pressure. We'll, we'll darken those up as we go. So this area of petals, you can see there's a whole bunch that are overlapping, they're folding every which way. So I really wanna come in to those little areas where they meet and add in some dark color. I wanna help those petals pop. And we'll keep adjusting those as we go. And it's okay to come down into your, your flower middle here and create a few shadows. So I'm just doing short lines, not really trying to fill it in very much, just some lines to help, help those petals pop up, pop off of each other. So you can kind of see as I'm going around how what that's doing. So if you're choosing other colors and you don't want the orange, you could always use the gray and the basic black pencils to help you achieve this or a darker uh, color for whatever flower color you're choosing for your flower. And I, I do adjust and I come back and, and adjust this. So I'm not too worried if I don't get it perfect on, on the first pass. So I use the, the lines that the stamp gave us. The person who, the artist that drew this stamp gave us all these lines and details. And that's what I'm using to figure out where to put the shadows. Okay, so after that layer, I'm gonna come back in with the crushed curry and I'm gonna start adding a little more pressure so that my color is darkening. And I'm going over the whole petal. Now, I'm not pressing as hard as I could. I'm just adding a little more pressure. I don't wanna beat down the fibers in the paper just yet. I wanna be able to adjust these colors and darken them up. And you can use back and forth, you can use circles, or whatever way you like to apply your color. I love the texture that I get, and I often change, I'll color one direction and then change the direction. That helps smooth out the lines, 
and I want to blend those colors that I've added on with my crushed curry. So I'm just gonna go petal by petal and add that color in. And I still turn my, my flower as I'm coloring. I like the lines to go in the direction that I feel the petal is drawn. And I'm not worried about if I leave white space. Some people like a lot of white space. It depends on what I'm coloring and how I want it to look. So these are just the general ideas of my process and how I color this flower. I wanna make sure I'm going right over where I added in that pumpkin pie and Cajun craze. I don't want harsh lines of another color without it to blend, blending a little bit, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to go over that color and blend it in so that it, it almost looks like a seamless transition. I, I want the colors to be separate, but I don't want harsh lines. I'm turning my pencil a little bit as I color, if you've noticed me doing that, to try to keep that tip sharp. So there's my second layer of crushed curry. Now I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna adjust some areas with the pumpkin pie just to add in a, a little bit of dark spots here and there. I'm using a little more pressure where I want that to go. And you don't have to do this if you want it to be more yellow. You don't have to add in uh, this pumpkin pie. I just really like the variation that I get with these colors. So I'm just adjusting it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be every petal. Just anywhere that you want it a little darker because we are going to go in and really darken those shadows. So this is just helping the areas that I want it to be a little darker yellow. We're using this color to kind of change that yellow. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with Cajun Craze and I'm gonna really get in those nooks and crannies for my shadows. And I'm using sh short lines like this, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. where my petals are overlapping. So I'm not adding it everywhere. And this needs to sharpen just a tad. 
I just use a cheap sharpener for my pencils. But I like it to be very, very sharp when I go in to apply these shadows. So I'm, I'm just coming in and I'm adding little flicks and lines where those petals overlap. So I'm not trying to do the whole thing. And this is gonna help really make those petals pop. So again, I'm not trying to do every single area. I'm not tracing all the lines, just where things are overlapping and intersecting, which I guess hopefully that makes sense. So not the whole petal, just where it makes a V or maybe a curved part. So like this, I would follow it all the way up, but not to the top. We don't want, we want the top to stay um, the just the crushed curry color. And I like to start from the bottom and go toward the top leave a little space. Some areas you may want a little darker. So I'm, I'm adding just a little bit more pressure. I want these shadows to kind of stick. I, I want, want them to be extremely visible. So I'm just darken, darkening those. And I like to start down here where the the flower middle is and kind of work my way up. Now this flower right here has these two petals that kind of both overlap it. So I'm making the bottom of this flower pretty dark because I want these two light areas to help that dimension. Okay, now I'm just going to look over my flower and see any areas that I want to add in this early espresso. So I'm going to use this to really deepen certain shadows. So I want this to be really, have a, a really dark shadow and then this area and this where it folds. Oops, and I broke my... <laughs> my pencil in, that's okay. So I want this shadow here to be really dark to help that fold kind of pop. And so I'm not using it on every petal, just where I really want to bring some of that um, darker shadow in. And this has a lot of petals right here on this side, so I 
I'm going to use it mostly over here. I'm just using short lines. I don't want my flowers to be brown, so I just want to use it a little bit. And I'm going to go back over it with the Cajun Craze. But it's really amazing how adding this little bit in helps these flowers separate and come to life. So I'm just going around and adjusting and, and making sure I like how all those shadows look. Now I'm gonna start finishing my flower. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna take the crushed curry and I'm gonna start pressing really hard and kind of beating down that, that layer of my paper. I'm just gonna sharpen this crushed curry a little bit. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna start doing a lot more pressure and I'll show you what I mean by kind of beating down or breaking down that surface of your paper. So as I press harder, this has kind of a, a waxy look. As I press harder and harder, I'm blending these colors, but it's also making it so that my paper will not allow any more color to be put on top. So I'm doing that with the ends of my flower. This is why we start off with light pressure and then slowly build up and add more. So I want to really blend in all those colors. You can see it really changes the color of the flower too. We can still adjust our shadows if we need to. And I'm just going around the whole flower again, just like we, we did before, each, each petal and adding a third layer of that crushed curry. do back and forth, you can do circles, you could cross hatch, whatever way that you like. Like I said, I love the texture that you get from the pencils. And if you like a little bit orange or flower, you can add, um, before you do this pr last step, you can add in more pumpkin pie. And while you're coloring, don't forget to change directions. That's going to help the texture on your pencil and the, 
the blending of the colors. Now you can adjust the color. You can, before you do this last step, you could go in and, and adjust any of those colors or shadows. So I like to take my time when I'm coloring and really look at my flower and see where I want to adjust it and where I want to deepen the shadows. So now, and you can use this as well. If you wanna go in and, and add something, you can go in with this pumpkin pie color as well and adjust any of your petals. I have added a lot of pressure, but not quite enough that I can't add any more color. Now I'm gonna come in and just make sure I like all those shadows or adjust the ones I feel need a little more help. I'm using the Cajun Craze. It's a soft, a little bit softer than that early espresso. I'm just trying to adjust where there might be some darker spots, maybe a little more shadow. I'm coming down onto the flower middle too. So I just wanna evaluate my flower and look at it and make sure that I'm happy with it. And it, any areas that I feel like it needs to be a little bit darker, I can come back in with that early espresso and I'm just using a, a little thin line to, to darken any of those shadows that I want to be really prominent. Like I said, every flower I do turns out a little bit different because I've adjusted them differently or Maybe the lighting was different where I was coloring. So I just want to keep adjusting anywhere that I feel like it needs just a little bit more. I actually like how this one looks. darker over here. So sometimes where these little, what I call a V, where the two petals meet and there's a petal um, behind it, creates a little V. I like to really um, add into that V area like this. 
I'm just doing a little short line. And there we go. So you can go back in with your crushed curry or your Cajun craze and soften any of those, especially where you added pumpkin pie. I like to just go over everything and make sure it's blended really well. And I like how my petals looking. Now to do my middle, I used Cajun Craze and I did circular motions. So I'm just adding in that color by doing light circles. And I'm starting off light again. I don't want to come in right away with all the pressure and have harsh lines. So I'm doing just circles all the way around and anywhere that you want a lighter area or an area to stay lighter, you could use a little more pressure and go in around that edge where they meet. Now I'm going to come in with early espresso and I'm going to call it color in the with circles in the opposite direction that I put on the Cajun craze. And I'm just using a light touch and I'm adding color all the way around. I feel like the Cajun craze going on first helps me create a highlighted area on my flower middle. Now I'm going to start adding more pressure and come in. I'm just going to do circular motions and adding in pressure and darkening it as I turn it. After I get that um, initial layer on, I'm going to color in this middle here. Again, circular motion. And then I'm going to fill this in. And I am using a lot more pressure like I would when I'm finishing off my petals. I want this area to be really dark. Now I want to come in here and I'm kind of changing the direction again that I'm coloring and I want to add in a really dark shadow. This flower petal is folded over. And then I'm just going to finish it off. Any areas that I want darker, I'm going to go back around and adjust. And by adding that Cajun craze. It kind of creates a little sh shadowed area. Now at this point, you can go in and adjust any of your shadows or anything that you really want to add in. So if you really want this to have a shadow coming from the bottom, 
I just start adjusting where these petals meet the middle. And I just add in any additional shadows that I feel like it needs. Again, every one of my flowers turns out different because the lighting's different or the mood I'm in is different when I'm coloring. So I love that. So there's my finished sunflower. I hope that you've enjoyed my coloring video and gained some tips from it. This is my finished card. There's a video for this. It will be linked in the description. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for joining me today. See you soon.